King was speaking was just something um, during those years as a student and, and serving as a movement brat, as you say. Um, you know, I really think that the young people, the college students, I was more uh, inspired by. I won't say that Dr. King was at the top in terms of his words and message. But also, uh, Julian Bond and John Lewis, uh, I was impressed by them. Carolyn Long Banks, uh, you know, was, was an outstanding leader in Atlanta. And we seldom talk about the women. But to me, Ruby Doris. Now, Ruby Doris won my heart and soul. And she was so determined, even in her illness, because I got a chance to see her in New York in the hospital there. Um, and she came to my house. She and her sister played cards with me and that kind of stuff. So I would say that, and a lady named Rosetta Gardner that was head of the National Board, the regional board of the YWCA, uh, was attended a lot of the meetings, knew, um, Ella, knew Ella Baker, and um, they were the ones that sent me from Atlanta to Montgomery for the Selma March. So I don't know who stands out more, but if I had to say so, today, I would probably say um, the women, um, Rosetta Gardner, um, Carolyn Long Banks, and Ruby Dara Smith. I um I can't I mean only what I heard back from people. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. I think we're good then. I know it's late again. Any men any special memories of Julian Bond other than I know you said he was you met him, you didn't know who he was at the time. <laughs> yeah, he I, I, his style. Julian Bond's style and his words, he was a wordsman. But at, I was in, impressed about uh, his communication skills. And he too had a fire in, in his belly about this thing called the movement. And um, he, he did his job in terms of reporting what was going on. Uh, with students across the country that was in SNCC. And later on, uh, we got to be very, very good friends. Uh, I was with him and John Lewis when they came to Greene County, uh, when the first black uh, sheriff was elected over there. Uh, and then later on, when, he had, when I was in Washington and he did a TV show there, we would often go to dinner and things. And, and then the Harold Washington campaign in Chicago for mayor, we did a lot with him. And I was, um, had a lot to do with that campaign, so I had him coming out a lot. There. And then on into um, now, I mean, you know, his passing, unfortunately. We didn't interact as much because I was here in Montgomery uh, he come in for board members meetings with the Southern Poverty Law Center, and once in a while we would have dinner. What, what would you say, or do, do you qualify the movement as it ever come to like a complete end, or do you remember about kind of you said you were there until like 19, I think 64. You said you were there until like 1964 in Atlanta before you left. I was, yeah, I was there until 1967. Let me see, 1966. 
-hmm. You were asking. Um, well, you talked about the voter registration, and I think I'm good with the phone number going back. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. You were asking me about the movement. I think there's an ongoing movement. And I think the issues that we addressed in the 50s and 60s, we still have to address them today. And I think I'm grateful for the young people who are coming forth to address these issues. Um, and um, I think, um, Freedom is a constant struggle. And we will have, just as our generation in the 50s and 60s, we followed what students did in the 30s. And this generation, even though they say that they are not gonna do and they're not gonna take this and not gonna do that, um, they still gonna have to, they still are addressing some of the issues that are important. And I would um, just like to say that we should not put aside the wisdom of the older people that they can share with um, students. And I value some of the wisdom uh, that people told me, and especially to read and know and understand what's going on around you and what happened in the past so that you can make a better future. Yeah, that's important. Very much so. What do you, um, what do you, because every student wasn't involved, mm -hmm. what do you think is different about people like yourself and the folks that were kind of leading that? Because even today, everyone's not involved. What do you think is the, that secret sauce that you guys have? I think that uh, all people, or most people, are sympathetic toward the need, such as the poverty that's around them. We have most people that would say that, you, you know, you can engage them. Uh, if you talk to them, you get them to give you a dollar or something like that. I think in terms of the health care issues, the violence and brutality, um, the education issues are the same as um, what we address. I know we're just going to have to find a way. Uh, you know what's different to me is that my, the eight kids, 40 and 30, we gave them so much and they were shielded from, for the most part, inequality and um, brutality. But now, the people, the Tea Party to me is just like the Ku Klux Klan, they just dress up and, and tell you the, what they don't do. And um, students now are experiencing this more. Uh, because the, the people they're in school with are the children of <laughs> the Tea Party people. And they have those same views and they, they, they exercise them just as they did with us. So um, I've learned that um, people respond when they are affected. Like there were a few students, we would go to cities, and it'd be two people going there, and then they wind up with the family, and then you wind up with enough people to go to the church. Now the reason that they did that was because their cousin got hit in the head, and so the families came around and supported. And you go from a house, from a few, to a many because that's what's happening. Today, it's the social media, and they're responding. And I don't know, but I pray that what they're doing will bring about some change.